Hey, do you know what time it is? It's time for interpreting graphs. Dun 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 da. If I can just turn the page. There we go. So graphs display information. When you interpret graphs, that means you're analyzing the information to come to conclusions. So you look at a graph and you say, oh, this is what I think, or this is what I see to be true. For example, from a graph, you could find something like what day had the most rain, or what months did the puppy grow the least, because that's always important. Lastly, you could ask, you could find when did the car travel the most distance? Maybe someone really had the lead foot and was trying to give her. That graph will show you that. There's two main points of graph, there's two main types of graphs we'll talk about today. The first is line graphs. And a line graph is when you can join all the points to form a line. So you see my plant height, I've got the month, and I've got the height in centimeters, and we can join those points with a line. We can do this because that data is called continuous data. What that means is one point will affect the next point. So if your plant's growing on one, in one month, then the next month it will continue on growing. It doesn't start from zero again. So what is continuous? It's continuous. Um, number one, so plant and animal growth, the height and weight of plants and animals is continuous because usually what happens is you grow and you keep growing, keep growing, and then you stop or maybe keep growing. Number two, temperature. The temperature in one moment of the day will affect the temperature the next moment because of the heat that's in the air. And number three, well, anything that is continually growing or shrinking. So maybe a bank account. If you spend money, you'll be shrinking. Or maybe you're saving, so it's growing. So key thing here, you can connect the points in a line because one moment, one point, will affect the next. The other type is called a point graph, and that's used when one piece of data does not affect the next. So we have the population of Bakerville and the year there, and we have different dots representing different times that that population was measured. Again, point graphs are used for discrete data, when the data in one time period doesn't can continue to the next. So what is discrete? Population is discrete because they do a census. They count the population. Each time they count, they start from zero. Each time I get a new class, you guys all move on. The new class comes and yeah, that class gets built up and counted up from zero. Sports stats. Maybe one year someone goes on a tear and they score a lot of goals. Well, the next year, they're going to start from zero again. So that is discrete. Lastly, sales. If you had a store, when you open up those doors each day, the sales amount that you have when you open up is zero. So again, discrete means starting from zero because one data point doesn't influence the next data point. One last time again, continuous, continue. See? Cont cont and you use the line graphs. Discrete, da 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 da, doesn't continue, and you use point graphs. There you go. Line graphs, point graphs, continuous, discrete, the end.